Welcome to Deacon Dave's in Livermore. This amazing display you see behind me is a result of a year-long process. My name is Sabrina and my friend Allison and I are going to take you on that journey behind the glass to see how it's done. But first, let's take a look at how Deacon Dave's got started over 25 years ago. Well, it was the year I was ordained. Um, I wanted to do something beyond decorating the church. Mm -hmm. um, for a while I was, uh, I did that and um, uh, it was like some people, you know, either liked the decorations or some thought it was too much and so I thought, well, I'm going to um, decorate my yard and home and then open, open it up to people of all walks of life. To build Deacon Dave's Christmas display every year, it all starts in December during the previous year's display. Deacon holds a private party inside his fully decorated house for the 15 volunteers that work on the display. Every room in his house is decorated, and every room has its own unique Christmas tree. It is here at this party that Deacon swears his crew to secrecy, and the theme is revealed to the crew for the following year. So, at this time, I'm swearing you all to secrecy, so nobody, nobody is allowed to mention what next year's theme is, so you're the first to hear it. And it's really a mixture of everything that you've said. The theme is Christmas is, and there will be a variety. We will have a nativity scene in one area. We will have a family scene in another area. Basically, you're gonna be journeying through on what Christmas is to many different people and on your way out, basically what the message is, is that Christmas is love. Now that the crew knows what the theme is, it's time to get back to work. Throughout the early part of the year, the planning team meets to shape and design the display. Then, in the summer, the team meets again. Here they finish planning out every detail of the display and assign various tasks to all the members. Now that everybody knows what to do, it's time to start building. In early September, it starts with an empty driveway. The driveway is cleaned up and construction begins. Throughout the next four months, construction goes non-stop. Construction continues all the way up until the opening Friday, the first Friday of December. While construction is going on, there is a number of pranks that happen while everyone is working. Working together, you get to know everyone, and there's sometimes little pranks that go on, and so I just keep that in the back of my mind and then as as we get closer then um, I, I give the Cole award for uh, the person that uh, perhaps scored the highest on on that or maybe the lowest maybe that's it during construction there's always pranks I remember one year uh, Deacon Dave had just bought a whole bunch of new lights like 40,000 new lights had gotten a lot of them up, was carting boxes around, and my husband said, oh, Deacon, these are all indoor lights. And of course, Deacon looked down and he looked at the box and say indoor, outdoor, but all he saw was the indoor part yeah. and freaked. So I gave him a heart attack on that one. Uh, another time there was a sign on the window that said private tours in the backyard uh, present your uh, Visa and MasterCards and, and uh, <laughs> little, little things like that. It's constant. It's you know when you get a bunch of people together that are having fun and, and get along great, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna get things happen. As the construction and pranks continue, they also put up over 300,000 Christmas lights. To surround the people walking through the display completely, they put some of these lights far, far up high in the trees. What we do is we have a 12-foot ladder. We have someone hold the bottom of the 12-foot ladder, send one poor soul up to the top with another 12-foot pole, and they do that on top of the house and uh, over the years you learn and so uh, we tell the light crew to try to lace the lights on the tree so that if we get wind it, it'll ride with the branches. With over 300,000 lights the power draw that Deacon Dave's has is quite impressive as is his PG&E bill. We are still getting close to maxing out our total power. We have 400 amps coming in which is double your normal household but we're still running about 380 because as we're increasing uh, our lights at least by going to the LEDs we're, we're cutting the power draw but we're increasing motor use and things every year so we're still hovering right there until we keep getting more and more LEDs 
we're not going to be able to go too much more. Over the years, we've grown, and until a couple of years ago, PG&E had mentioned that uh, um, the industrial transformer that they installed a few years ago across the street is, uh, to, was to their knowledge, the only industrial transformer in a residential area. Um, they were afraid I was going to turn my lights on one, one year and that the neighbors would all dim. So everyone shares in that, so it's not just my industrial okay. transformer. How much does your power bill go up? I never year? tell a soul. Never tell? Um, I, I make sure that I'm sitting down when I get the bill because it is big. <laughs> And sure. um, if anyone really, really, truly wants to find out, uh, I'll trade them their PG&E bill for mine, and they'll know what mine is, but you know I haven't had any takers yet. It's almost time to open. The night before the display opens, it's a mad rush to get everything done in time for opening the next day. Opening night is quite the event. Hundreds of people show up, the mayor comes, awards are given out, the lights are turned on for everyone to see for the first time, and everyone gets to walk through the display. All sorts of families and people who walk through the display each have a unique experience. You've got some that have a religious experience. You have others that um, uh, it's just been very joyful for them and for the families. Some have said that they, they make it a pilgrimage every year to come here. Very interesting. A lot of people are very drawn and feel the very spiritual pull when they come here. They're very, very moved. My aunt was here last night for the first time and cried at the nativity scene in the window and cried under the light. You know, it just, it, it touches people in so many different ways. And we do have a lot of people thank us for saying, you know, reminding people of, of what it's about. I've been told that there is a sense of spirituality when people come through here, whether it's a whimsical theme or not. Um, and these are people from all faiths or no faith. We have a counter, we installed an electronic counter at the gate, so uh, it's fairly accurate, obviously it's not going to get little, okay. little ones or ones on shoulders or things, uh, but uh, it gets us fairly close that we're somewhere around 40,000 every year that, that go through. And we've seen people come through as they're younger, coming through with their family, and now they're coming with their own spouses and their kids, and, they, and it's been neat seeing everyone. Um, this is such a tradition for so many people in the area, and not just Livermore, but around the Bay Area. While people are walking through, there's a bridge that goes across Deacon's Creek. This is called Proposal Bridge, and several marriage proposals have taken place here. Now you've had 50 proposals? Uh, 51, 51 wedding proposals on Proposal Bridge, yes. You'll see a couple go across the bridge and, and you'll see the girl notice, oh, look at the signs, it says there's been proposals here. Weird. <laughs> yeah. That's odd. So I'll say, you know, we haven't had one tonight. If it's a quiet night, we may not know what happens. Um, you know, we just may be kind of spot it. And, uh, but if it's a more crowded night, it's always fun because the whole line will erupt and she said yes, and, you know, and we come out and congratulate them and everything. And, and so it's really fun when it does happen. Have you performed any of the weddings then? No, not really. I mean, they're all different denominations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm just excited that, uh, that it takes place on the bridge. In addition to marriage proposals taking place at Deacon Dave's, there's a coin toss machine. Everyone loves to toss money in and all of the money goes to charity. All the coin that people put in the wishing well and in the coin toss, and then we also have a box by the door. Uh, everything collected goes to the same charity, to Santa Secret Service, mm -hmm. and um, it keeps it going throughout the year. Its main focus is at Christmas time, as you imagine, Santa Secret Service, but it's a non-denominational uh, uh, group that that visits. Um, shelters, hospitals, nursing homes, and delivers gifts. It was uh, started at St. Michael's Church and, and is still rooted there, but um, there are many volunteers from other faiths that assist in this. I'm the Secretary General of the organization. The head of the organization is called the Arch Santa. He's the only one of the Santas of that organization that dress in the robes of St. Nicholas in the Bishop's Mitre and Crozier. Um, all of the other Santas dress in the American Santa attire that we're, we're used to seeing. The organization has, in 50 years, they celebrated their 50th anniversary this year and they've given out one million Christmas gifts. The money helps us now year-round uh, whenever 
we um, have a specific need, we're able to use the monies for that or for the gifts. A lot of people think that the money we collect goes to the pg and &E bill or something oh, yeah. else, but it, it all goes to charity. Deacon Dave's is an extraordinary place to visit in Wahoo. If you'd like to know more about Deacon Dave's, visit www.casadelpomba.com. If you'd like to see some of the behind the scenes and the interviews with some of the crew, please visit www.metahelion.com slash Deacon Dave's. I'm Sabrina Science. Thank you for joining me here at Deacon Dave's.